So we have a box here, which is for the interior, and it's from Zoom. Finally, so I uh, ordered it earlier in the year, uh, just to knock this out and actually have it on the car. Now I actually have something I have been looking after for just as, almost as long as the hood. I just have never gotten around to getting it. So let me get this box open and then I'll show you what I got. Interior goods, back mirrors, other zoom items, uh, the meat and potatoes, the meat and potatoes. That's the whole kit and caboodle. Wow. All right, cool. Can you, can you picture where this is going right now? Let me get this open real quick. So this is the zoom interior panel this is brushed aluminum like my doors essentially pretty cool and then this will be fit for uh, three gauges so that way I can actually have gauges in front of me instead of the side on um, a pillar which they used to be so that's pretty cool I'm assuming this is tape so I give you instructions of course in Japanese so pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I'm probably, I don't know what all this stuff is. So I'll probably bring that inside out of the heat, but essentially this is the bottom, just the top, and then this will sit right in front and then just sit right there on the outside, sit on top. So this will be uh, freaking sick when I get it in there and then it'll kind of match with the silver. That's why I went with that instead of uh, just going all black. Black was an option. They had red and I think beige, but brush just seemed to look like the best and work out the best. So, cool. So when I come back from vacation, then I will go ahead and get all that installed and we'll go from there. So, the latest and greatest, my zoom panel. Can't wait to put this in all the way, so we're gonna get started on that. Uh, the instructions are a little confusing, but I'm pretty sure, let me, let me just go get them so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I don't have any of this, so I'm not worried about that. This is the step I'm about to go on to next. And then I'm assuming this whole thing is to come off so this can go on. This goes in before it. There's some of the black part of the double-sided tape for both sides, underneath everything. And then, yeah, some double-sided tape on that. And then we're back together. I don't know what this image is right there at the end of the day, but uh, yeah. So we're gonna go through these, knock this out real quick. Uh, and a quick tip, if you didn't know, like an easy way, because the way I used to do this, oh, to pull these out, these vents out, you can literally just use a screwdriver. Just put it, I would put it behind the first one, push it all the way to the side, and then just pop it out. Ta-da. So it makes it easy. You can do it on the inside or you can do it on the outside. I usually just do it on the inside because you can get more grip on it and then just kind of, just kind of pop it out. There we go. You don't really need to use a whole lot of pressure. You can, but yeah, you should be good. And then everything is still dory on here. So uh, yeah, now we got our screws in here to get out up top. So we'll take these out real quick. One on each side. I feel like I've taken this dash out, or this dash, the this component out a billion times already. So it's pretty straightforward for me. Uh, most people can do it too. So got that. Usually there's some clips that you may need to prop out, but I got rid of them because you really don't need them all together. So try off the back part, and boom, we're out of there. So now that we're out of there, let's see what the other thing actually is going to consist of. Show. So back to our quick instructions for the uh, pop-up lights and the caution lights. They actually have screws on the back. There's just two, one right here, one right here. Uh, but you basically just take off to get it off. But when you put it on the new one, there's double-sided tape right there. So just gonna sit from my understanding of that double-sided tape and then hopefully hold itself together is my guess but um yeah let's uh let's just test fit everything real quick just to see what it looks like while we're in here 
some racks. Let's out of the bag, shall we? All fiberglass. It's a little bit stronger than the plastic that's there today. Which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. You can clean it, you don't have to if you want, but let's see what we got here, shall we? Just put this here. Back a little bit. Thank you. sit down at the same time so it's kind of like this from what I'm seeing but I think the silver plate goes in before it based off the instructions so let's get the silver plate out too all right so this panel has this little plastic piece on the back so it's basically I'm guessing fiberglass in to a degree um I can barely see it actually that's probably better. You can see it now. So that's just the slide in plate. So the metal piece goes in between this part here. So you'll see it in a second. So you want it to be facing outward. So it's like bowing out. That's gonna be pointing to the front. And then the slide piece in here, you're just gonna literally slide it right in. Ta-da, we have one whole piece. Obviously the bottom piece needs to be pushed in, but that way at least we know the top sits like this. And then we should be able to but overall, I mean, the tape on and everything it looks okay. I'm not really a fan of this portion of it. That's the same on both sides, same with the top. So I'll probably play around with it a little bit just to see if we can get it a little bit better of a fitment on there. But uh, I'm assuming that's where the tape goes. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just go from there. So we can get moving. All right, so I think I figured out what I need. Um, this is really just an overlay for the stock one. So you'll put the stock one in underneath and then you'll basically just push this on top of it. Everything's moving around. Um, and it's not taped down or anything, but it'll squeeze up. And then everything kind of just fits in there, squeezed up in there. But the reason I figured this out is because this, these vents just slide right through with like no issue. So there has to be another reason, which makes sense why that's there now. Uh, this just slides in there, I'm guessing. So we'll try that and see how we go. But I like the gauges. I'm loving, I got the AFRs on the left side, boost in the center, and then coolant temps on the right. But um, yeah, once we slide all this on there and put it together, I think, I think we'll be in the right space, so. All right, so uh, now that we've figured that out, we're gonna go ahead and put the tape on the edges here, since they're just gonna kind of line up forward, up, all over the place to give you a lot of tape. Go ahead and cut these out to, to length and get it going. All right, so. Got all the tape pretty much everywhere that it needs to be. All ran along everything as much as we can get on there. Um, so now it's time to take all this one-sided piece off, uh, get the other side sticky, and then take this off, set it in the center, and then push it down in there and just hold it. Probably use some clamps just to really hold it in there, make sure it doesn't move anywhere. Um, and mainly these like tighter areas where I think it possibly could move, but otherwise, uh, yeah, we're on our way. Oh, and then the last thing, I think this tar line is meant for the, the back piece, uh, just to kind of level it up a little bit, I guess. But the rest of it, it doesn't seem like it would be anywhere else. It doesn't fit in there. Um, I'm just not sure on that part of it. But otherwise, yeah, I'll put that there. May try it without the tar first, just to see. Because once we use the tar, we can't release again. So yeah, we'll get the double sided tape going and go from there. Got everything off with pretty, pretty ease. I wish all double sided tape was this way, but um, yeah. Now we can get the clamps, put those in there, and then go. And we, we're just gonna hold it for now while we have everything in there. And then, uh, yeah, we should be set. And just like that, it's all connected. So. There's a little bit of, everything seems to be pretty, pretty up close. There's a little spacing, I'm just, that's just expected from my understanding, so. But I think overall, it looks great. Don't mind all this nonsense down here. That's from my previous stuff, so. Um, this is a little off. I'm not sure if that's just me, probably me, when I put it in there, but otherwise, uh, yeah. We'll try and slide that over a little bit, and then put it in there. That's the best I'm gonna get. So it's pretty, pretty in there. 
Uh, but yeah, let's put it in. I could probably trim those down a smidge to make them fit better, but I think these are okay. I think this is okay as it kind of sits here right now. Just thinking out loud. There still needs to be, obviously everything needs to be connected. And then I need to move my gauges up top. So that's going to be our next thing. All right, so um, taking apart my dash already. A little bit to get to the wires. I'm ready to solder those almost in. Uh, this needs to essentially come up here. I'm trying to figure out if I can pull it through from behind and kind of pull it up because there's there's wire, there's like room right here to pull the wires through. So I'm probably going to tuck these behind that, which means I got to pull all this stuff out in order to get behind it. But um, yeah, we'll do that. We got the hole drilled that's bigger now up top. Uh, I don't know if you can see any of it, but there's a bigger hole up there now. So now we can fit our boost gauge uh, line, vacuum line, uh, through that hole. And then we can also fit our line for our, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Temp gauge, there you go, for a cool line. So we'll put those through. I already had a hole. I just needed to make it a little bit bigger so we can fit both of these through easily. And then, uh, yeah, should be set. I have some grommets, I'll see if I can make that work possibly, but um, yeah, let's uh, get going. All right, so I uh, got all the wires untangled for the most part, and then re-soldered everything we needed, rewrapped everything back up, and then now we fed it through. So I pulled out, like I said, my radio and then AC stuff. Uh, I didn't move any of the connectors on the back of it. I just left it as it and kind of dangled it, but there's, there's little holes on the left and right side. So I basically just fed it through that. Should be able to pull it up because there's a little gap right here at the top. So um, yeah, once we get that, then we should be set to put the whole thing in and leave it in, hopefully for a very, very long time. So let me get back to that. All right, so got everything back in. We got all our wires pulled out now to go up top and then sit right there. So um, yeah, time to put them in. Let's make sure they all turn on before we put everything on here, hopefully for the last time. All right, let's see what we got, shall we? One on. Two on. Three on. All right, all three, let's go. Now, we need to put this whole piece back together, and then we need to actually hook up the water line. The rest of it's already good. We already know that, but now we need to hook up the water line, which means I need to drain a little bit of coolant. Fun, fun. All right, my phone's gonna, or my GoPro's gonna die, but man, thing looks freaking spectacular, man. So excited about this. Got all my gauges, water, boost, and AFR. Let's get this thing in there. So my GoPro's gonna die, so real quick, um, I need to basically trim, because this part right here, that's sitting on top, uh, essentially has the, a spot for the wires to come through, but, it is not allowing, because of the back end of this, it is not flat, so I need to trim the top end of that just to be uh, pretty much flat, and then we should be set to try and put this back on. All right, so it's in to a degree. We just have to trim, like I was saying earlier, that back piece that is, oh, this, that is right here, so as long as you can see it. Once we trim that, I put some tape here just to make sure nothing goes into the air system or falls in there or anything like that to the best. Probably put a little bit more just to make sure. But um, yeah, otherwise, get this cut up with the Dremel, trim it up a bit, and then um, yeah, go. All right, I changed my mind. I pulled it out just so I can actually try and make this as straight as possible, um, and then we'll go from there. But pretty much gonna take it from this edge all the way over to this edge um, and try and just make it as flat as possible. So, round two. Lots it's trimmed up, so not exactly flat, but it does the job. So now we'll try and put this in and see if it fits before you connect the gauges again. All right, so we pretty much got it in there um, at this point, but you can see it doesn't. I, I had a feeling there might be some fitment issues, so it's flush up here, up top, all the way around, which is cool. It's once it hits this crease. That's where it's supposed to go in. I think it's really just because it's not sitting flush up against the original. So if I ever take it off again, which I'm sure I will in the future, when I take it off again, um, essentially we'll just either trim this back piece so it's it's 
gives us more room because uh, I think it's just con contacting at the bottom more than it is anywhere else. Um, and it's pretty much the same story on this side. A little bit of gap right here through and through. And then you go up and it seems like it's okay. But I think that's just part of the tape and where the fitment, the fitment is for everything. So, um, but overall, I mean, I'm cool with it. I like the way it looks more than anything now that I have three gauges. So that's my important thing. But um, yeah, stoked, super stoked, finally. So now I can maybe put something down here at the bottom, but at least for now, maybe a block off or something. But now, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we need to get that back bolt off so we can put our sensor in. Um, where did it go? Ah, here it is. The sensor that we drilled and tapped for already. So, uh, yeah, let's get that bolt off. It's an 11, which I have a few different options, but it's kind of tough to get to as it always is. So let me just get this off, put the other one on, and then we'll. All right, got our block off plate out of there. This should be the same third pitch as this. All right, so got everything back on. Had to take pretty much everything off, but um, yeah. Got everything reconnected back in there. Uh, the actual temp gauge works now. So let me show you that real fast. Get all in there. Um, but yeah, let's turn it on. Now you can see. Oh, 98 degrees, sweet. So once we actually let it sit for a bit, I'm gonna let the uh, RTV seal on the back and then we'll fill it with water again. Everything's tight on the back, so we should be set, but just in case, uh, I don't want it to leak out early or anything like that. So probably give it like an hour or two and then we'll try and fill it up and then go from there, see where we're at. One hour later. Cool, so it's been about an hour. Let's get it filled with some water. See if it's leaking. First of all, check here. Nothing. Cool, cool. It's leaking. Let me just find out pretty quick. Oh, it's slipping out a little bit over here. Squeeze the bottom line to get a little bit more fluid and airflow through it. Sometimes it gets the air bubbles, sometimes it doesn't. But we got a little bit out of there, so now that we have all that. I don't hear any leaks. Let me put my hand back here just to feel real quick. It feels dry everywhere back there, so that's whew, that's a relief. We'll see what it feels like under pressure. Uh, but yeah, now we can fire it up and get it warmed up. It is time to fill her up and turn her on. Let's get it going. I was gonna check. All right, well, my GoPro is messing up, but we are starting it. The water went down. Looking good. Uh, we're not seeing any leaks over there. I thought I had a leak right here, but it was just this. Wasn't all tight enough. Best part, our temp gauge works. So um, and now I am in love. <laughs> it's probably the simplest way of saying it. So let this heat up, get to a good temp, cool down, go off, start it again. Rinse and repeat. Here. So I'm keeping it at 150-ish, which is what I expect. 
now I'll unplug it just to heat it up a little bit more and get some more heat in it real quick. All right, so starting it back up again. It seems like it's holding about 163. Just at a standstill, nothing moving, fans keeping it pretty steady. So I'm curious just what it will turn to. Turn both fans on. I'm just curious to see if it'll go down at all. Well, the dual fans work. Keep this thing extra cold if I need to. So I'm curious to see what this will be uh, when I'm driving around. Just sit down, yeah, just sitting and chilling. It's obviously not a big stress on it, so we'll try it after the fact that we drive. But now that all this is in there, well, let me shut this off. Now that this is cooling down obnoxiously too well. All right, so now that we're done in here, yeah, it's time to take it for a drive. Not going to be in this episode. In the next one. So, per usual, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see. This will be back on the ground in two seconds. And we'll be driving from there. Until the next one. Peace.